Okay, folks. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of clips from the Roland Martin show um, from uh, this morning. And um, I got to tell you, I, I don't always agree with Roland Martin. And um, this is going to be an example of uh, one case where I disagree with him. And it's in his interpretation of what the Dallas Cowboys did um, last night uh, at the uh, Dallas Arizona football game. Now, what they did was before the playing of the national anthem, the team on Moss, just the Cowboys, went on the field, linked arms, and then knelt. Then, when the national anthem was played, they continued to link arms, but they stood up. And the Arizona Cardinals uh, came on the field and linked arms and stood at the same time. Now, honestly, I didn't have a problem with that. Only because when Colin Kaepernick uh, decided to take a knee, he took a knee and was hoping to obtain visibility for his cause. His platform was that of being an NFL player who took a peaceful action during the playing of the national anthem. Now, he specifically has said he does not have a problem with the military, okay? He supports the military. Um, he uh, basically wants to draw attention to the fact that this country is racist in nature and that law enforcement is killing black people without consequence and that the criminal justice system is basically tilted against us. Those are the issues that he has. Again, not with the military, uh, not with uh, everyday uh, citizens, but basically he's protesting the system and he was looking for exposure and he believed and was correct in stating that the exposure, the maximum exposure he could get would be to take a knee during the national anthem. Taking a knee is not a sign of disrespect, okay? Taking a knee, which the military do all the time at uh, the site of a fallen comrade, a fallen warrior, they take a knee. So that is not being disrespectful. The taking of a knee is representative of, of the flag be flowing at half staff during a, a time of trial, turmoil, and trouble. But that being said, let me play the clip from uh, Roland's show where he basically, in my opinion, uh, didn't understand that they were giving reverence to uh, the protest while at the same time uh, giving respect to the flag. So basically what they did was to take the disrespect of the flag and the anthem out of the equation and allow the fact that they took a knee to be focused upon and the reasons behind the taking of the knee. Here we go. Folks, the, the, the debate over whether NFL players should kneel during the national anthem to protest police brutality and racial injustice, of course, spilled over from the weekend into Monday's conversation around the country last night before the start of the game. Dallas Cowboys and the Arizona Cardinals players and coaches and team owners locked arms. Now, the Cowboys, who are one of three NFL teams that did not directly respond to Trump's remarks, took a knee before the national anthem. The team said the gesture was made as a show of solidarity, but it, again, took place before the national anthem, so I don't quite understand what that was about. So even Jerry Jones took a knee, again, before the anthem, so they were all standing during the national anthem, so what the hell. Uh, 
Okay, so what the hell basically means that they are supportive of uh, obviously the anthem and the flag, but at the same time, uh, they were supportive of the cause uh, that uh, Mr. Kaepernick uh, has been pushing and uh, is a just cause. So you can be pro both of these situations and they do not work against each other. So Con uh, um, Roland got this one wrong as far as I'm concerned. All right, now, uh, the second point that I want to uh, bring to your awareness, there are Judas goats in our community everywhere, okay? And I don't know about you, but I gotta believe that there's got to be some kind of a master list of black people who are either uh, Republicans and have swallowed the Republican Kool-Aid or are just so goddamn ignorant that they can be used like cattle, okay? Now, Roland had... Um, two people on his show, and I'm going to uh, uh, show you portions of uh, the clip. Both of them are uh, former military. Uh, the one gentleman basically uh, made his case as to why he has no problem with the kneeling uh, for the national anthem. And I was fine with that. The woman, a black woman, was absolutely and utterly ridiculous this woman made my ears hurt made my a brain basically turn to mush that's how full of shit this woman was and it was doubly embarrassing for me because the woman was from New York and we're supposed to be savvy both politically and otherwise and the rhetoric that this woman was sprouting just absolutely made no sense. And then when she was asked to uh, back up statements and Roland kept trying to jump in there because the woman uh, was filibustering like none other, she fell back to, to age old uh, tried and true methods of defense that he was attempting uh, not to uh, listen to her or to shut her up because she was a woman. And then she turned around and questioned his patriotism because uh, she served in the military and he didn't. Now, I'm not going to play all of this because uh, I, I can't go through it again, but I'm going to play you know, a, a couple of pieces of it for you. And uh, I welcome you to uh, go onto the News One website because absolutely they're going to have this segment on. And then I'm going to bring up a third topic. Well, actually, it's a, a continuation of a second topic as far as Judas Goats uh, being within our community. So give me a second to cue this up and we'll take it from there. Hang on. Now, before I go to the woman, I just want to let you know that there are a lot of white people and I honestly mean this, there are a lot of white people who understand what's going on here with uh, the, the uh, taking of the knee in protest of conditions for black people. And um, if I can pull it up, and I think I still have it, um, here in Texas, uh, one of the uh, local news people uh, was really, really good about uh, stating the actual facts. But uh, what you're going to see right now is uh, Shepard Smith from Fox News basically spelling out the whole thing for us. Here we go. Not me. I don't want to say it. Let me let Shepard Smith of Fox News say it for me. It's very clear that for his base, this is the red meat of all red meat because they're able to reframe this. They're able to say, oh, they're attacking the national anthem. They're attacking, they're attacking the troops. They're attacking the flag. None of which they're doing. They're not doing any of that. 
They're upset about racial injustice in the country, and they're upset about the things that the president has said. And yet he's able to turn it around for his base. Isn't this all a play to his base? And could it possibly be so that they don't notice there is no health care and North Korea is the biggest mess since the Cold War? Maybe a distraction he wants right now, right? Um, no, definitely plays up to a corner of his base, a fraction of his base. I can tell you, I was talking to a Republican about this just a couple of hour, hours ago, and very, they don't see this helpful as being helpful at all. This source was saying, um, you know, these protesters were just a few uh, players, and they were barely getting any headlines, and then Trump attacked them and attacked the NFL, um, and ever since then it's just ratcheted up so that now you have a whole bunch of 200, what, 200 players taking a knee or back in the locker room not standing for the national anthem. And it's just, it's an ugly dispute right now, right? Um, people in general uh, don't like it when folks protest the national anthem, but it's become more Of course, they're not debate, protesting the national the flag. anthem. Right, correct. That's not it's what they're doing. Just debate. We're complicit. And See, and that's that's the point. They're not protesting the national anthem. Now, you heard it from a white man who works on Fox News. It doesn't get any better than that, all right? But for whatever reason, people hear uh, uh, bullshit lines, okay, and uh, they go running with it without, one, uh, doing any research, and two, uh, listening uh, to the other side of the story and then having, uh, hopefully, more information to make a prudent and rational decision on. Now, the uh, uh, next piece is going to be uh, this woman. Hang on. All right, here we go. And I, I apologize uh, for the abuse you, that you are just about getting ready to take. Petersburg, Florida, Muhammad Shaker, also a member of Veterans for Kaepernick, chairman of the Republican Liberty Caucus of Tampa Bay. Also by phone from Ponte Verde, Florida, Bernadette Simple, a former naval cybersecurity officer and wounded warrior. All right, so you're the head of Republicans there, but you're a veteran for Kaepernick. What do you make of conservatives? trying to make this out to be about the flag and the anthem and ignoring police brutality. Well, uh, good morning, sir, and thank you for bringing me on. Um, just wanted to clarify, head of the uh, Liberty Caucus of Republicans, um, there's not a lot of us, we're not exactly well liked amongst conservatives, uh, we're more libertarian leaning. Um, them trying to change you know the this whole taking and uh, taking a knee during the during the uh, national anthem thing to me personally makes uh, no sense. See, uh, I've taken multiple oaths while I was in the military. I've taken an oath of enlistment. You know, I've sang war songs. Nothing at all ever says anything about a flag. Everything that I have ever sworn to protect or defend has been the United States Constitution and its people, and that's it. Well, so let me ask you a question. So the oath you took, was it the same oath that the president and members of Congress take, take when they swear to uphold and protect the Constitution of the United States, uh, foreign and domestic? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, that, is, that is the oath that we all take. So, so you were sworn flag. to protect the Constitution? Yes, sir. Yes, no and, flag. <laughs> and the Constitution in it, the First Amendment, is first. Yes, sir. Absolute free speech. Yep. Unless it, obviously, unless it's insightful or otherwise. Yeah, absolute free speech. You can do whatever you'd like. And the thing is, you know, even if you extend it as far as, you know, we've had uh, times when people have burned flags and all this other stuff, it honestly doesn't. Me as a veteran, I don't, it doesn't hurt me, and I'm only speaking for myself, of course, but I think what veterans really need is, I don't know, less war. Like, if people really, really, really care about veterans, you know, maybe these conservatives should talk more about uh, reforming the VA and helping more veterans get jobs and get the health care that they need. See, see, perhaps, see, see, right there, yeah. Muhammad, that's, that, that's my big deal. It amazes me, all of these people, well, they want to have their yellow ribbons and all that support our troops. Oh, my God, we love our troops. Yeah. And when it comes to health care, 
when it comes to education, when it came to the GI Bill, uh, I know that Paul Reichoff and IAVA uh, and Vote Vets uh, were sitting here begging members of Congress to support it. And all of these people, they pimp the military. They use the military. And all of these people criticizing Kaepernick have been using the military, saying, oh, you're, you're, you're hurting our veterans and, 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 and you're, you don't care about them. That is a lie. And then, of course, yesterday, the conservative Daily Caller writes a report about how veterans groups opposed NFL protests, signing the American Legion uh, and, and veterans of, in the BMW, but ignored vote vets and the guys like you who, who support Kaepernick and the players. Yeah, it's it's really silly. It's honestly, it's um, it's more of a mainstream media game between both sides, uh, from how I look at it. Um, I, I honestly wish, I, I, would, I would prefer, it's going to sound really libertarian of me, I prefer the free market sort it out. I think when the president said that these players should be fired for doing that, that's not of his, you know, business. You know, that's the business of the owners and the managers and what they allow or disallow their players to do on the field in uniform. And it seemed to me like all the owners and managers and even coaches were okay with whatever individual players wanted to do, that's fine. But it's not the president's place to tell people, uh, sorry, tell players or, you know, organizations to fire right. players if they take a knee. That's not his job. That's the job of the owner and the manager, and they're allowing it. So what's the problem? Bernadette Simple, you are a wounded warrior, served uh, in the Navy. Uh, your assessment of this whole debate. Okay, so well, good morning, and thank you first of all for having me on. Um, I I I disagree with that. I think the the NFL players are being disrespectful. I think there's a place, time, and a place for civil debate. And wearing team jerseys to disrespect our company just doesn't. It's not washing with a lot of people. You say time and place. The mainstream. Wait, wait. Let me finish. I think the mainstream media and everybody else is out of line with what the real, with the mood of the country is. Most people don't like this. I also want to say that I am also a season ticket off for the New York Jets. I've been a Jets fan since I was a little girl. I paid $14,000 for PSL seats. I paid 5000 a year for tickets. Now let me stop this right there. This woman is a New York Jet fan, but she lives down in Florida, which is not that big of a deal. But she pays $14,000 a year for a, a, a seat license and another $7,000 a year for the actual ticket itself. I don't know about you, but I don't know a lot of ordinary regular folks that can pony up $21,000 a year to go to a football game. So that just lets me know that uh, she is not what I would consider a uh, regular folk. I don't go to the games to see people protest. If they want to protest, protest on Monday. Every Monday, the football players get off. Go down in their counties, in their states or whatever, go see the mayors, go see the politicals, and tell them what their concerns are. See, now that's, that's my second problem. This woman is uh, basically trying to tell people uh, when and where they should protest. So she doesn't even understand uh, the Constitution uh, that uh, she basically signed up uh, to uh, basically support and defend, all right? Because freedom of speech is not uh, four days a week or uh, the day after a football game or uh, happens to take place in a uh, specific uh, place. Freedom of speech is everywhere at any time your rights your constitutional rights do not start and stop okay at a certain time or at certain places so again this broad doesn't know what she's talking about but look let it keep going we are one country the flag is to bring us together. And I disagree with uh, Shakir. I, I, I'm not sure I know his name. Um, uh -huh. I disagree with you vehemently. When people die, and I just came from a funeral from a young man that died on, on the ship, okay? 
When they send those bodies back, those bodies are wrapped in the flag. When the first person who was killed in the Revolutionary War, who was a black man, mm -hmm. but the flag means something to this country, the national anthem means something to this country, and I, uh, as a black person, I get it. No, as a black person, you don't get it. All right, because, <clears throat> excuse me, if you knew the history of the national anthem and you are stating that you are four square for it, you don't know your ass from a hole in the ground because the national anthem, which was adopted in 1931, okay, was written by a pro-slavery, anti-abolitionist aristocrat named Francis Scott Key, who was a prosecutor in, uh, I believe it was the state of, it wasn't DC, it was probably Maryland. Yeah, I believe it was Maryland. Anyway, and during the War of 1812, okay, he was a lieutenant uh, for the American Army. Well, there happened to be a group of former, well, runaway slaves who formed a military unit fighting on the side of the British who promised them their freedom if they would fight for them. And uh, those uh, Marines proceeded to whoop some serious white ass. And in particular, they whooped his unit's ass so bad that this motherfucker cut and ran uh, back to Maryland. It was approximately uh, three years later, okay, when uh, under a truce, a flag of truce, that he went to tr try to secure the freedom of one of his friends that uh, was captured by the British. Not the entire company, just one of his friends. And he happened to see those black Marines kicking uh, some serious ass, and that's when he penned the Star Spangled Banner. And for those of you, and I did a video on it yesterday, go look up all of the words of the Star Spangled Banner, because there are three stanzas to the Star Spangled Banner, and most people basically uh, only are familiar with the first. But if you go to the third one, he basically, was stating, and it wasn't a song when he wrote it, it was a poem that was put to music. He basically was stating that the black people sh should be hunted down and killed and given no respite, no refuge, period. Don't believe me? Look it up for yourself. So this lady doesn't even know the history of the Star Spangled Banner. But I digress, let her continue. And there's ways that we need to address what's going on in this country, but desecrating the flag and the national anthem is not going to bring a lot of people to your side. Bernard, I got a question uh, for you. I got a question okay. for you. You said they can protest on Monday. Please show me where in the Constitution or in the First Amendment where it says you can only protest on these days and at these times. I didn't say that. I'm just saying. No, no, actually, you did. Yeah, she actually did say that uh, they should go protest on Monday uh, down at, uh, I guess, governmental offices. But that's how full of shit she is. On their day off. Hold on, hold on. Burn that. Why can't they protest on Sunday? Because, let me tell you something. Last year, there was a young woman who protested the flag in the Navy. She's out of the Navy today. And those are their the rules. Clearance. But they lost the clearance. Burn, burn that. What's the difference? Burn that. If there are no uniform. Burn that. If there are no rules. But here's another question. Here's another question, Burn that. You said you spent fourteen thousand dollars. Yep. The city of New York. You said you're a New York Giants city ticket holder, right? No, I said the New York Jets. New York Jets, same thing. Another yes, bad, yes. another bad team. All right. I know. So, so you, I know. Now you, you said you spent a bad team. one second. I gotta watch people protest. One second. You spent fourteen thousand dollars. Yet the city of New York, in a ten-year period, spent seven hundred and thirty-five million dollars on N 
NYPD police brutality settlements. Mm -hmm. Now, the players are protesting that very thing. So let me just oppose. In fact, the amount of money, the, 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 one, one, second, one second, one second, burn that, burn that, burn that, burn that, let me finish. The amount of money that the NYPD has spent is almost equivalent to how much the taxpayers in Las Vegas are going to spend on the new football stadium there. But you're saying, don't protest on Sunday. They are not desecrating a flag. They are bringing attention to police, to police brutality where clearly folks have been ignoring it. But what the people, okay, I'm, I'm so glad you brought up New York because you know what? New York is the most liberal state in the union. It has a democratic government. Last I, last I checked, last I checked, a police baton, a police baton doesn't have a DRR on it. Wait a minute, roll it. No, no, burn it down. See this lady now. Now she's getting emotional, and as you hear her voice, and she start now she starts yelling in the phone. Oh, wait a minute, okay. New Yorker, a 16th generation American. Let's bring up New York. You're absolutely right, and you know what? The mayor is a Democrat. The governor is a Democrat. All the politicians are a Democrat. Has anybody talked to those people? Yes. You see, uh, the answer is yes, but uh, she's not going to let him uh, get a, a word in edgewise for a while. And yes. Has one no, 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 Okay, now she now she's uh, switching the tack because she answered her question. He said yes, and now and, but she wants to ramble on. I'm not going to subject you to too much more of this one. Bernadette, let me what give you receipts. The role of our government? Let me give you receipts, yeah. Bernadette. Bernadette, you can keep talking. I'm going to give you receipts. The New York Justice League they have met with the mayor and the governor and state legislators and the city councilmen there. There have been players that have met there. There have been NYPD police officers who have met with them. Colin Kaepernick has met with folks. Malcolm Jenkins of the Philadelphia Eagles came to Congress and met with members of Congress. Michael Bennett of Seattle Seahawks has done that last week for NFL players, released a 10-page memo to Roger Goodell. They have actually done that. There are other, Anquan Bolden is one of those players they've met. So you are saying, well, they've done it and they have. And so, now what's your answer? And it meant with Democrats. What does that have to do with the Now what does it have to do? Roll it. Roll you can't, roll you it. cannot accuse them, Bernadette. You we cannot we accuse players. Listen, you talk, what, what is it? Because I'm a woman, you're going to talk. All nice. Uh, there she just, she just used the woman card. I check Raynard, because burn a dead, burn a dead, nice try. I check Raynard Jackson yesterday, a man. I need you to answer the question. I need you to answer the question. You say You won't even let me answer the question. Hold up, answer this question. You say it. Answer the question. You say it. Will these players meet the politicians? I just gave you examples. Now what? What have the politicians have done? Who's held them accountable? Nothing has happened. You're wrong. You're wrong. So now you want to, wait a minute. They're closing Rikers Island. What is the point of having this if you're not going to let me finish? What is the point of you not not speaking truthfully? You are lying. I'm lying about what? (laughs) Go ahead. Go ahead. Lying about what? I live in New York. I'm, I'm a New Yorker. I live in New York, okay? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, I'm a New Yorker, which is true. Okay, I live in New York or I lived in New York. She said both of them. I think she lives in Florida, okay, but she's a former New Yorker. Anyway. What about what? Did Mark run a dead? What? Hold what up, run a dead. I will now, answer your question. Now people, people, the Americans, the average American who buy the ticket to go to there, they take their kids because let me tell you something. Okay, the average American doesn't go uh, to see a live a football game. You know, now, 
maybe and possibly I'm wrong, but uh, 350 uh, million people in the country, uh, 32 teams, uh, they don't hold uh, 100,000, most of them, let's say the average uh, attendance at a football game would be about uh, 50, uh, you know, some, let's call it 100, it's not 100, but it's 50, but it's 50, so let's, uh, let's just basically say uh, 1.6 million uh, people uh, per week, let us say, uh, multiply that uh, by uh, 16, and uh, you are nowhere uh, near uh, 350 million people, or even uh, 175 million people. Uh, you don't have, you're not near 100 million people. So, uh, and I'm thinking the average is going to be somewhere in there. But anyway, um, I uh, deflect. Let's continue. In my section, even at the Jets, there are probably about three black families in my section. Because the average American okay. can't so afford an NFL team. Exactly. An exactly. enormous amount of money to spend some time with their families on a weekend. And they have to be subject to this. When they vote for representatives who are supposed to address this issue on the state level Burn and on the national level. Hold tight. So basically what this lady is saying is uh, she doesn't want to be, in her own words, inconvenienced for two minutes uh, during the playing of the national anthem. And it's not even a matter of inconvenience because if she doesn't want to see the players uh, kneeling around the field, uh, basically she could stand up and keep her eyes on the, TV, on the uh, giant TV screens that most of these fields have. But Again, she's going way out of bounds on this. One second. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to go to a break. The Democrats have lost a <laughs> All right. So uh, let me, I'm going to uh, jump to the back side of this. So give me a second. All right, folks. Let, let me, uh, I'm going to try to wrap this up as much as I can. Here we go. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, they, they knelt. They knelt to pray. They not, knelt no, to say, not just I'm, to pray. I'm, I'm protesting the, the national anthem. I'm protesting it like they never did that. You're wrong. And for you to, to suggest that, for you to suggest that, you know, you, who's the liar here? I bet we're individuals who who's did that here? very thing. Okay. Who's the liar? Muhammad. No, I'm a 16th generation American. I know. You don't have to tell me. Look, you, do you know? You ever hear Shiloh Baptist Church in Washington, D.C.? You, you ever hear that's of Deacons of Defense? You ever hear of the okay. Nonviolent so Coordinating Committee? To to you ever heard of CORE? Don't tell me what the civil rights thing was about. <laughs> don't try to tell me what being slaves in this country was about. Don't tell, try to tell me what being an American is about. How, where did you serve, Roland? Where did I serve? Let me tell you where I yeah. served. I served as a taxpayer. I serve as an American oh, so and not right. and burn day. Not, 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 okay. Oh, now you're going to let me finish? Oh, now you're going to let me finish. You know that? Not, every you know person, not every person in America. Last I checked, we do not I'm have. Not, we're not excuse about me, about you allow and me to you finish. And I, bro. Allow me. See, now she's going, she's going on the personal attack. And she's trying to uh, indicate that because he didn't. Uh, serve in the military that uh, he's not patriotic uh, since she served in the military and therefore she is. She's full of shit. Do you finish? Do you? Not a lot. Allow, 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 allow me to finish. Not every American. Not every American. And see, now you do not want to allow me to answer your question. Oh, but you didn't just you didn't not every Ameri like not it. every not American like in this country oh, so now, serves so in the military. Because, you know, not every so American has to wear the uniform. Here. You can be a one hundred percent red blooded American and not put on the uniform and serve your nation because we all have respect for the United States Constitution. That is clear and simple. And the bottom line well, is this here. Half of the people have never even read the Constitution. Well, Half of the people have never even read the, read the okay. Declaration of Independence. Okay. It was just a, a, a thing yesterday that half of people don't even know what the three levels of their And guess of what? The, and a lot of them are, a, and a lot of them break. are supporters of Donald Trump. Break, Burn dead, thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate it. Muhammad, thank you very much for joining us. Hopefully, you, all of this, more folks will have read the Constitution. We come.
See, now that woman was an absolute and total embarrassment. And number one, how would she know if half the people have read the Constitution or half the people have it? She's gone by something that she read, and we don't even know uh, the source of the information that she received. So, um, absolutely, unequivocally, an embarrassment to uh, black people everywhere and particularly black people in New York. You know, that's, that's the kind of woman I would be willing to bet you cash money, cash money. That woman is not married, period. Now, let's go to my third thing as far as um, Judas Goats are concerned. Um, Raynard Jackson was on a Roland Martin show uh, yesterday and he was uh, hyping up um, his uh, black business pack, quote unquote. And Roland Martin asked him a specific question as to uh, who was funding the pack. Um, I'm going to jump to the section so that you can get all the information and you can see for yourself that white supremacists are insidious. And you have these coons like Raynard Jackson uh, who don't give a damn where they get their money from and once that money's in their pocket uh, they know who they have to take their marching orders from. Hang on one second well, let me cue it up. Okay folks here we go with the uh, catching Raynard uh, Jackson in a bold faced lie. Yesterday Raynard Jackson was on this show talking about his, 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 his black pack uh, is called Black Americans for a Better Future. He, of course, uh, has invited Steve Bannon and Corey Lewandowski to a Black Entrepreneur Summit here in D.C. tomorrow. Now, on the show, I specifically asked him about why Bannon was invited, and I also asked him what Bannon had done for black business owners. He kept dodging the question, dodging the question. Then I asked Raynard this question. Does Robert Mercer fund your organization? No. Who funds your PAC? People. Who are people? Are you saying Robert Mercer doesn't fund your PAC? No, he does not fund. He made contributions, but he does not fund. Oh, my. And how much, oh, in, what, how much contributions has he made? Go to my FEC report. It's all public so, information. So you, which, so you won't say it? No. I, 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 oh, do you really think I keep up with my numbers? Oh, yes, you do. No. Oh, hell, yes, you do. No, I don't. You, no, it, I don't. It, oh, so what? You just I mean, run so what is your point behind? No, I'm asking who, the point. I have, I have I, thousands I, I, of contributors from across the year. thousands? Yes. Go to my FEC report. So, so Robert Mercer is being sued, say about the issue of civil rights in this country. So we just so I'm asking you, because he's one of your contributors. What has Robert Mercer done when it comes to black entrepreneurs? Is he going to be there? He may show up. He may show up. So what you're saying is you have no details, you have no facts. We got to wait till we. Uh, uh, Shelly, go to my iPad, please. This is a story. From January 28, 2016, Black Americans for a Better Future, Super PAC, 100% funded by rich white guys. In this story, it says that $417,250 was given to Raynard Jackson's Super PAC in that year. 96% of the money, $400,000, came from Robert Mercer. Who is Robert Mercer? That guy right there in the middle. This guy right in the middle. Let me quit. That's the guy right there. That's not cute. That's him right there. Who is Robert Mercer? The billionaire who is the co-CEO of Renaissance Technologies who funds Breitbart. Oh, I see why Bannon is speaking. Also in that clip, y'all come back to me please, in that clip, our dear friend Raynard said he has thousands of donors. Did you hear that, Joe? Thousands. Tiffany, did you hear that? Joe, did you hear thousands of dollars? Yeah, I'm happy he got a check. Did you hear I'm about happy, Joe? Did you hear thousands, thousands of dollars? I'm happy he got a check. Okay, folks. All right. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Shelly. Go to my iPad, please. I love Shelly. This, lady, this, ladies and gentlemen, this is the actual Federal Election Commission website. Raynard told me on the show, go check it. It's there. You see at the top, 
Black Americans for a Better Future Super PAC. This is a page called Raising. This is all the funds that have been raised by Raynard Super PAC from January 1st, 2017 to June 30th, 2007. Let's go ahead and scroll down. Robert Barnett, Maureen Cole, Kenneth Abramowitz, Richard Finley, Raynard Jackson, Keenan Grinnell, A Great Smile Dental Care PLLC, Larry McKinney, Eric Small, Gregory Scott. Okay, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Next page, please. Oh my God. Andrew Sabin, Aaron Monago, The Lab Group, Lisa Claire Dw Dwoskin, Robert Mercer, Robert Mercer, Maggie Harris, Maggie Harris, CRP Inc., Campaign Funding Direct. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's 18, am I correct? Yep. And we're paying attention. Okay, Ascended Group, Robert Wallace, Robert Wallace, Alan Inman, Alan Inman. One, two, three. You're dragging the liars. Right? We had 10, we had eight, we had three. Mmm, that's... A thousand, obviously. That's a thousand. That's a thousand? Also known as 21. Also known as also 21. Known as 21. <laughs> Raynard Jackson said he has thousands of donors giving to his Black Americans for a better future. Shelly, back to the iPad. You will see $74,876.42 given in the first six months of 2017 by 21 people. Radar, Radar, you sat in this chair and lied. You lied. You said, go check my numbers. I check your numbers. You tried to play the okie doke. What did I tell Bernadette? What do I tell all of y'all who come on this show? Do not lie. I don't care if you have a differing opinion. I don't care if you invited Steve Bannon. But do not come on TV Once News One Now trying to represent as you as you are for Black America by calling your plat, black, pat Black Americans for a better future and then tell me Robert Mercer does not fund your pack. Oh, by the way, Shelley, please go back to my iPad. As you see, seventy-four thousand eight hundred and seventy-six dollars and forty-two cents was raised. Guess what? Out of all the people who have given money to his pack, let me go backwards here. Let me zoom in. You see the name right there, Robert L. Mercer. Do you see that? Let me slide the iPad on over. You will see he made two donations June on February 7th, $2,100, $25,000. That means out of the 74000 given, Mercer has given 27100 far more than any other person to his pack. Reynard, receipts, money receipts. You got busted. Don't come on here again lying and go in well for it. All right, folks. So again, this is quote unquote, supposedly a, a black super pack for business funded by white supremacists. Judas Goats, many. Raynard Jackson, definitely one of them. I'm going to add this little piece on at the end when I, I had uh, told you earlier that uh, there are a bunch of uh, white people that actually get it. And uh, this is a uh, local uh, news guy uh, that's uh, down here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And uh, just like uh, one of the uh, Fox News hosts basically spelled it out, this gentleman is going to uh, spell it out uh, just as well. Former 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick takes a knee during the national anthem in San Francisco last year. We noticed, but very few players joined him. Not many players seem to care. He can't get a job in the NFL now, and very few have said much about that either. But the president says he wants that peaceful protest to stop, says those players should be fired if they take a knee during the anthem, and calls those players a name I never thought I'd live long enough to hear a president say, and now everybody cares. Donald Trump has said he supports a peaceful protest because it's an American's right. 
but not this protest, and there's the problem. Any protest you don't agree with is a protest that should be stopped. Martin Luther King should have marched across a different bridge. Young black Americans should have gone to a different college and found a different lunch counter. And college kids in the 60s had no right to protest an immoral war. I served in the military during the Vietnam War, and my foot hurt too, but I served anyway. My best friend in high school was killed in Vietnam, and Carol Meyer will be 18 years old forever, and he did not die, so that you can decide who is a patriot and who loves America more. The young black athletes are not disrespecting America or the military by taking a knee during the anthem. They are respecting the best thing about America. It's a dog whistle to the racist among us to say otherwise. They, and all of us, should protest how black Americans are treated in this country. And if you don't think white privilege is a fact, you don't understand America. The comedian Chris Rock says it best. There's not a white man in America who would trade places with him, and he's rich. It has not gone unnoticed that Trump has spoken out against the Mexicans who want to come to America for a better life, against the Muslims, and now against the black athlete. But he says nothing for days about the white men who marched under a Nazi flag in Charlottesville, except to remind us there were good people there. And when he finally tried to say the right thing, not one of them was called an SOB or should be fired. We have white men in America who waved the Nazi flag at the Confederate flag, and he's concerned about taking a knee because it disrespects this flag. We use that flag to sell mattresses and beer. We wear it as a swimsuit. We wrap our bald heads in a flag bandana and stick it in our pants because we disrespect that flag every day. Maybe we all need to read the Constitution again. There has never been a better use of pen to paper. Our forefathers made freedom of speech the First Amendment. They listed 10 and not one of them says you have to stand during the anthem. And I think those men respected the country they fought for and founded a great deal more than the self-proclaimed patriots who are simply hypocrites because they want to deny the basic freedom of this great country, a country they supposedly value and cherish so much. Booyah! Drop the mic!